Now we will begin with uh, our study of the first class of optimization problems which is uh, optimization of a function over an open set. So, what this means is that the feasible region is an open set and the function or objective function more precisely objective function, we will assume this to be a differentiable function. Okay. Now, since we are going to talk about differentiable functions, I need to tell you a little bit about my notation for derivatives, second derivatives and so on. So, now for that let f be a function from R n to R. So, any x in R n I will write its I will denote it in this sort of way x will be denoted with its coordinates as x 1 till x n. Okay. So, this is a so, every vector x in R n this way will be interpreted as a column vector. Okay. Now, when I write something like f x evaluated at x at, what this means is this is the derivative of f at x hat. Okay. So, the small x here, the small x in this notation just simply says that derivative is with respect to x. With respect to x. So, this will be important when we are talking about uh, uh, functions that are uh, functions of more than one variable. So, we may want to take derivative only with respect to one of the variables. Okay. So, this is this just stands for derivative with respect to x. Another notation for the same thing is this evaluated at x hat or Or this. Now, the important thing to note is that this this quantity f sub f x at x hat, this is actually a row vector. Row vector and it is defined in this way. You cons consider the partial derivatives of f with respect to each of the components of x and put them into a row vector. Evaluate all of these at x hat. So, f sub x evaluated at x hat is this row vector of this thing. There is a related quantity which is denoted in this sort of way, or to be more explicit about what we are differentiating with respect to that is that is denoted it is denoted this way and that is simply the transpose of this derivative. 
this thing is called the gradient of f at x hat. Okay, and once again the 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 small x here simply denotes uh, that the gradient is with respect to the variable x. Right. So, suppose if I have a function f which is a function from R n cross R m to R and so my variable my variable x uh, the, the x variable lives in in R n and the y variable lives in R m. Then if I write something like this f sub x if I write something like this f sub x at x hat comma y hat this here is can someone tell me is this a row vector or a column vector? It is a row vector. Okay. Uh, with how many components? N components, right? Because that is the number of components. I am taking the deri uh, derivative with respect to x here, and x has n components. So this this is a row vector. at this particular thing, also denoted by again okay. Now, if f is, so in both of these cases here in this case as well as in the earlier case, in both of these cases f was a function that mapped to r right the uh, so f itself did not have multiple components it had just one component right so f is a scalar valued function okay so then now if f is vector valued so let me just write this for your reference here so this is a case of a scalar valued function If f is a vector valued function, then say we have suppose f is a function from R n to some R m, right. And what we will do is we will think of this every output of this vector, every point in the image of this of f is itself a vec column vector. So, f should be thought of like this f at a point x is equal to this kind of column vector f 1 of x, f 2 of x dot 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 f m of x. It has m columns. Now, if I want to, if I take the derivative of f with respect to x, what I need to do is take the derivative of each of these components with respect to x. So, this evaluated at x hat now becomes, a, so every row, every, every component of f will have a derivative and will each derivative would be a row vector like this. And so, what you are going to get now is row vectors stop stacked one below the other. So, the whole thing would become a matrix. So, this would now this would become at x hat
Tekrar Login Okay, so that's your that this is also there are there are uh, multiple names for this. You can call this is uh, called the derivative. of f at x hat that is one of the names. Another name for it is that it is called the Jacobian of f at x hat. Okay. Now, we can also write high, another higher order derivative. So, this is what is called the Hessian. So, the Hessian is simply this. So, if I take the derivative of the derivative, but the derivative of the derivative, uh, I need to take, you know, when I am taking the derivative of the derivative, the inner thing has, de uh, so let me, okay, sorry, uh, let me put it like this. So, I am taking the derivative of the gradient. Evaluating that at x hat. Okay. So, this is simply another term for the same thing, another way of writing the same thing would be this is, is the whole thing evaluated at x hat. So, this will again, because the gradient is a column vector, I, uh, I can now take the derivative of that and uh, that then will give me a again a matrix, matrix that looks like this. All of these evaluated at x. Another notation for the same thing is simply del square f evaluated at x hat. Okay. All right. So, along with uh, derivatives, we also need a an important theorem that pertains to derivatives. Derivatives of different derivatives and approximations of differentiable functions. So, this theorem is, it would be known to you in some or the other form probably before this. This is Taylor's theorem. Taylor's theorem basically says that if you have a differentiable function okay, and if you look at the, the value of the function close to take a reference point and look at the value of the function very close to that reference point. Okay. What Taylor's theorem is basically saying is that close to that reference point, the value of the function is very well approximated by a linear function that you can construct using the value of the function at the point and the derivative of the function at the point. So, what does it mean by well approximated and what is the sense of the approximation? That is the what is what is made precise by Taylor's theorem. Okay. 
but the main idea is basically that when you are close, if your function is differentiable, then and you want to look at how the function behaves near a point, okay, you have some reference point and you want to know well near it how does the function behave. Well, it tells you that a linear approximation is uh, can be obtained okay, and it tells you what that approximation is, okay, it tells you in a, a very precise sense. So, so the theorem is uh, is the following. So let f from R n to R be a differentiable function. let A be a point in R n. So, this is my reference point, okay, this here, this you can, this is my reference point. And what I want to know is, how does the function behave at another point x. Okay, let it say, then the theorem says, there exists and there exists this sort of function h. such that if you take f of x, then that value of the function at x, that other point x is given by this, it is given as f of a plus, now f of a plus I will just change my notation. I want to instead of using the point, instead of denoting this by x, let me denote this by a y. Okay. Okay. So, we, so, my reference point is a and my the other point at which I want to evaluate the function, let us call that y. So, f of y is equal to f of a plus, what is this vector now? This is a rho vector, a rho vector which is the derivative of f with respect to x evaluated at a. Okay. So, that transpose y minus a plus another function h of y times y minus a, where and this is the important part, where h of y tends to 0 as y tends to a. Okay. So, now I want you to appreciate what this sort of what this theorem is actually saying and it will become evident as we go into the next our main result also. But remember uh, just, just for clarity like I want you to see what this is saying. See as y tends to a of course, it is true that f of y and f of a will come close to each other. As y tends to a, f of y will approach f of a. So, that in that, so that is not saying anything new. Okay. What this theorem is saying is that as y tends to a, okay, if you look at f of y minus f of a, f of y minus f of a, divide that whole thing by y minus a, then that starts behaving more and more like f x of a. Okay. So, what this theorem is effectively saying is that if you look at the, it is of course true that f as y tends to a. as y tends to a, f of y tends to f of a. But what this theorem is actually telling you is how fast does y tend, does f of y tend to f of a as y tends to a. 
So, what this is saying is it is telling you telling you somehow a measure on this difference. It is telling you that this difference f of y minus f of a divided by y minus a this is something this is equal to f x of a plus h of y where h of y is a quantity that will become smaller and smaller this will become small as y tends to a it will become close to 0 as y tends to a is this clear so this is what the theorem is actually effectively telling you so it is not only telling you that the function values near a are close to f of a that we already know but it is also telling you how fast they approach f of a okay they approach f of a at at a rate that is linear in y minus a okay and the constant of linearity there is roughly equal to f x of a which f x of a plus this h of y where h of y becomes smaller and smaller as you come close to so all of optimization is about these about how fast different quantities converge okay the, the relative rates at which different quantities converge is uh, is something that we keep exploiting all the time in optimization so that is why uh, an estimate like the like this one which come from taylor's theorem is, is a, you can say a cornerstone of optimization okay.